bought it in August of 1974, so it's about 47 years. Wow. And uh, bought it when I was in college at graduate school and uh, had a whole lot of fun with it. And uh, when I got out of school, decided to return the favor and fix it up. So restored it. And, uh, I'm glad you drive it every that. day. It's my daily driver. Do you really? For 47 years. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> well, easy to work on. I met Donald Healy when he was in his 80s, and he said, you know, the more you drive them, the better they run. And so I've taken his advice happily ever since. So. Yeah, and, and he's clearly right, because yeah. daily driver 40 years later. Yeah. Well, these cars were wonderfully simple. I mean, they're a great metaphor for the way technology ought to be. They're fast, good looking, and easy to use. <laughs> exactly. And. Uh, so I've always appreciated the simplicity of these things because there's nothing on it that doesn't need to be there. Everything has a purpose. Why overcomplicate it? It's, yeah, it's very simple. It's and I, don't, I never really realized how small a car is until I park it next to some modern car. <laughs> I'll come out of the parking lot and I thought, oh no, someone's stolen my car. It's gone. And I said, oh, well, look, oh, there, oh it's hiding there. behind the Mustang. <laughs> 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 when I was in school up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, we, the school hosted a Halloween party. So we decided we were, and it was a big cash prize. We were all starving uh, students. And uh -huh. So uh, we decided we were going to win the contest. So we drove to the party in this car, seven people in here in costume, <laughs> uh, dressed as a Wizard of Oz group. <laughs> and I was the tin man in an aluminum foil outfit. I don't think you ever had a two seater that had seven people in it. But. No. no, especially one that's this size, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, people say, how does a tall guy like you get into something like this? And, you know, folks our size, and it's really actually simple. You have to do the Elvis hip swivel to get in it. <laughs> once you've done that, there's lots of leg room in it once, once you're in it. So, the hard top is the rarest part of the whole car. Yeah. They only made, for the late model cars, they only made a couple hundred of these hard tops. And I'd never even seen one before. Right. And, uh, years ago, I get a phone call and someone said, you won't believe it. The original hard tops has come up for sale. Better get your checkbook and get down here quick because there's a bidding <laughs> war going on. So when great. I bought the car, the car I originally paid a thousand dollars for the car. I paid three thousand dollars for the hard top. Wow! But it makes the look of the car, and it's really nice. I've driven, I just came here just after Christmas from Los Angeles and drove it across the country. Really? It runs, it runs perfectly. And the hard top is really nice for open road cruising if you're out on the highway. And, uh, you know, in West Texas, the speed limit out there is 80 miles an hour, the posted speed limit, which means everybody's doing 95 or 100. So, right. Uh, don't tell my wife I did that. <laughs> <laughs> is so, that roll cage in the back? That's a real functional roll bar. Right. Is it like a factory option? No, or? Uh, I added that myself. Uh, the hard top is so thin, it's paper thin, it's like an eggshell. It has no protection at all. Mm -hmm. And these cars, uh, when they were new, they, people could drive them too fast and lose control and flip them over and you have oh, no yeah. protection. So that's a real structural roll bar. Found this company in North Carolina called Hard Dog Fabrication. So I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna call them up. So I called up, and who should answer the phone? A grandmother. Hello, young man, how can I help you? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know if you can do this or not, but I'd like to custom make a roll bar. She said, sure, we can do that. Can you draw a picture? And I said, yes, ma'am, I can draw a little bit. She said, just send me a picture. And I said, okay. And so they had a price posted on the thing, and I sent it to her, and I said, I'd be happy to pay twice that price because it's custom. She said, don't worry about it. We'll make it for you. Sure enough, they did an absolutely beautiful job on it, and uh, she called me back, and she says, your roll bar is ready. It's only going to cost you half what we quoted you because it wasn't that hard to make. <laughs> just kidding. This is so nice. That's such a so, great story. Uh, so there it is, and uh, it's structural and it's welded to the frame, and uh, it's uh, it's it's a heavy duty drawn over manual type thing. It's thick wall, stainless. So. This is the first time I've ever been to one of these. I have no idea it was going to be like this. There must be ten thousand people here. Oh easily. yeah. And, uh, well, and like those lots over there are filled. Yeah. On the other side of Von Muir's full. I came this close to not coming to this. And I'll tell you a quick story. I, somebody said, you need to come to this thing. And I said, okay. But he said, you got to get there before the sun comes up. It's a big deal. So the sun's starting to come up. And so I thought, okay, I'll drive by there. It was snowing last night. I thought there's yep. no way they're going to have it. <laughs> so I started to turn around, and, uh, but I didn't. So I came over here. And then a really nice guy helped me get parked over here. But anyway, enough talking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much.